years, the tropical weather and climate research team at Colorado State University has been releasing April hurricane forecasts. Earlier this week, they just released their most active prediction in those 29 years since 1995. And we're about to take you to Colorado State. But first, we welcome Local 10 meteorologist Brandon Orr with his take on their take. Hey, Brandon. Hey, guys. Yeah, it, it definitely got a lot of attention when this forecast came out. Colorado State University, one of the leaders in long range hurricane forecasting, predicting about 23 named storms this season, 11 of those becoming hurricanes. Compare that to last year, we had 20 named storms, which by the way, was the fourth most on record. So the prediction for this year is a little bit above that compared to average about 14 named storms. Now there's many factors that go into coming up with a long range hurricane forecast like this, but there's two in particular, two big ones that are really standing out this season. And the one is that developing La Nina. We were in a El Nino pattern last year. A La Nina means cooler than average water out here near the equator in the Pacific really changes up the weather pattern, especially into the Atlantic, leading to a lower wind shear. Wind shear typically tears apart these tropical systems, keeps them a little bit weaker. So lower wind shear would lead to typically stronger storms or more frequent storms. The other is uh, water temperatures. If you look at this map, anywhere you see these oranges and reds, it's above average water temperature. And look, it covers the whole thing almost from side to side here. But we look at one uh, area in particular, and that's the main development region. That's where most of our storms develop. Ocean temperature there right now on average is about 79 degrees. That's more typical of July, not so much early April. So that's kind of crazy in itself. Uh, that should say typical temperature for this time of the year is about 76 degrees. So between the developing La Nina and the warm water, Janine, all the cards are kind of pointing towards a more active season. Yeah, hot, hot weather, rapid intensification. So yes. uh, we, we are bracing for it, right? Yeah. Uh, Brandon, you're going to stay with me, actually, as we welcome Nick Mesa, who is from Miami and a Gator, but now at Colorado State working on his master's, formerly with the NOAA's Hurricane Research Division. Welcome, Nick, from Fort Collins, Colorado. You have a very unique perspective there. Oh yeah, thanks for having me, appreciate hey, it. Talk to us, you know, we, we wait for these predictions every year to come out, uh, Dr. Klotzbach and, 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 and you and, and the whole team. What goes into making these predictions every year? And, and this year, I think, I think has a lot of us kind of concerned. Yeah, yeah, and that's a great question. I appreciate you asking that. Um, one of the main things that goes into these forecasts is typically looking at the past 25 to 40 years of data. So typically we can see um, in this past historical data is what do the conditions at this time of year in March and April, how do those correlate with a the hurricane season that follows? So Brandon mentioned it earlier, typically we look at how warm those sea surface temperatures are in the Atlantic and how the ensuing um, ENSO or El Nino Southern Oscillation, how that looks like for the peak of hurricane season. In addition, we also like to use a combination of statistical and dynamical models to really give us a broad range of potential outcomes. And overall, this year, um, a lot of them have pointed to an extremely active hurricane season, unfortunately. I feel like when we report the news, we hear more and more about these hurricanes that get so strong so quickly. But Brandon, you were saying this is it's nothing new. It's just that it's happening more frequently. Yeah, we've seen rapid intensification in hurricanes going way back, but it definitely is becoming a little bit more frequent. You mentioned Hurricane Otis. We all remember that one that hit Mexico. It went from a tropical depression, tropical storm to what a, a very powerful hurricane, one of the strongest ones ever to hit that part of Mexico on the Pacific coast in no time. Nick, talk to me also now from sort of a science perspective. You guys put out your predictions. Do you have any sort of influence then on the messaging? What do you think that sort of politicians could do a better job of in warning people about these hurricanes that are approaching more intensely? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we can kind of break this up in different time scales, right? So one of the main reasons why, like, why we like to put these out in, um, in April is because this gives us a nice amount of time ahead of time before hurricane season starts. Um, I was born and raised in Miami, so one of the things my parents always like to do this time of the year was, you know, make sure your trees, your, your trees are trimmed, make sure your generators are working, make sure Abuelo and Abuelita have their hurricane kit ready <laughs> and their houses are ready to go. Um, and yeah, as from a politician perspective and things like that, you know, it's just communicating that as these storms, you know, as they threaten your area, you know, to make sure you're listening to National Hurricane Center guidance, making sure you're listening to um, your local emergency management officials as to where the storm is headed and what potential impacts may be in your area. 
And what I found interesting when we put this out on social media, Nick, and the number one question we got is how confident are we in a forecast like this? Because if you remember last year, we had kind of conflicting signals. We had uh, the El Nino, which kind of says eh, it could be a, a less active season, but we also had the warm water temperatures right. kind of going against each other. This year, all the signs are kind of pointing towards a more active season. So how does that play into your confidence uh, for this forecast? Yeah, last year was a weird one. We really had two signals that are typically associated with two different um, hurricane season outcomes, I guess, and had those clashing together. This season, as you mentioned, we have two factors that typically favor a um, pretty active season. So that's kind of lending to an unusually confident forecast for an extremely active hurricane season. That being said, it's still a little bit early. So of course there's a bit margin of error and we do have ensuing forecasts coming out in um, June, July and August. But as of right now, there is a, a pretty decent amount of certainty um, for an extremely active hurricane season, just because of how hot these uh, temperatures are in the Atlantic and the pretty robust signal that we're going to have a, a pretty good La Nina by the time of peak hurricane season. Nick, thank you so much. We really appreciate you joining us. You know, Brandon, my, my question for you is just, you know, as a meteorologist and, and as, a, as a forecaster, what do you want people to know? Because every year these hurricane seasons come upon us. Uh, sometimes these hurricanes, they do. They, they intensify very quickly. Um, you know, I think people want, you know, hard and fast answers. Yeah. But is, is it getting harder to forecast? There's definitely a lot more going into it, and, and it's, it's not consistent from year to year. Well, just like last year, where we saw record warm water temperatures that we've never seen before, so we don't know how to compare that to the past. But I think the main takeaway here is, even though it's, we're forecasting a more active season, this doesn't tell us where the storms are going. So it doesn't tell you how many are going to actually make landfall. So you take uh, Andrew, for example, Hurricane Andrew, 92. We only had seven named storms that entire season, but it was that one storm that oh, actually made it here. And then we had other years where it was so active out into the Atlantic, but in Florida, nothing. Uh, Nick, and then talk to me just very quickly because we only have a few minutes left. You have the predictions that are out now. And then do you at some point then revise those predictions as the months go on? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, we have um, additional forecasts in June, July and August. And that kind of helps us, you know, as we get closer to hurricane season, once we actually enter hurricane season, we can see what those current conditions are and kind of hone in on those forecasts and what the impacts may be for um, the ensuing hurricane season. It is not always an so exact stay tuned for those. <laughs> Nick, thank you so much. Brandon, really appreciate both of, course, of you of talking to us about the hurricane season already in April. I can't believe it. <laughs> Almost here. Yeah, it's coming up fast. Love it. Thank you so much to both of you. We will be right back.